So it's uh, like it's reflective. Just uh, what I say is to be reflected upon. You know, you know, I'm not trying to convert you or convince you anything. Anything I say, uh, just observe how it affects you. You know, that's the point of of this practice, mindfulness. And so, you know, the words I use or, you know, the tone of voice or whatever has its effect on your, you know, on your mind. You know, the only way we can ever really avoid or get out of the suffering realm is, is through this mindfulness because we are these very sensitive forms and so we're constantly, you know, being affected by the environment and uh, the impression on the senses and so forth that we inevitably have to experience. Uh, just a part of the karma of being born as a human being in, in this realm. So it's, it's really, you know, I find it very helpful to, to really contemplate what being human is, you know, what because even though we, we we all assume we're humans so we have this common identity but but what does that really mean you know and in, in not just in taking it for granted or uh, because you you believe that, that you are but uh, what what does that really imply at this moment and of course being born as a human being means we have to live in a, in this body for its lifespan, from birth to death, and that, and that this body and its senses is about, and this is a sense realm, so it, sense, uh, sensitivity means uh, pleasure, pain, uh, beauty, ugly, so it's not just, you know, being, sensitivity implies something beautiful and positive, but it implies this what we're experiencing now, the heat and cold and hunger and thirst and and sickness and loss and and pleasurable sensory experiences and unpleasurable ones and neutral. <clears throat> and so this is like a reflection on the way it is. It's not a complaint nor a criticism or a judgment anyway, it's just noticing what what it is to that birth, you know, our birth has brought us to this point in time, here and now, and, and we're limited to the form of the body, and, that, and it uh, is a sensitive form, which means we're subjected to, to a, a relentless impingement of, uh, of that which is happening around us, you know, so and we have, how much control do we have over environment or even our own bodies? So this, like the Buddha's teaching, is about reflecting on the way it is, observing, knowing, rather than, you know, trying, we can create images of perfection. Uh, we know how things should be. If everything was, was perfect, you know, we can create an ideal or an image of perfection but this realm is not about it's not an ideal realm it's not about ideals it's about sensitivity change birth and death <clears throat> and so this brings us into the reality of here and now <clears throat> and then the reflective ability is our you know we're not just helpless victims of, of our conditions, but we have this this uh, Buddha mind. And so the Buddha mind, or the Buddha, uh, this word Buddha means awakened, reflective wisdom. So the, the actual word is not a person, it's not, you know, it's pointing to a, a human being that's awake and aware of the way it is. So, so the word Buddha and Dhamma, you know, it's the Buddha uh, knows Dhamma or the way, the truth of the way it is. Where as personalities, we we're conditioned to identify with the body, uh, with our names, our cultural conditioning, 
uh, our memories and feelings and all the rest. So we 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 experience life through perceptions and through ideals. Like m- many of us were brought up in societies where idealism was was uh, predominant. Like my own background, very idealistic society. So you, you had brought up with the ideals of perfection of how things should be. And then, um, and then you, then the realities of your life, you don't, you don't quite know. You always feel there's something wrong with the way it is because it's not perfect. And uh, and then you can see, you know, you can think there's something wrong with you, take it very personally as something, some flaw in your character, or you start blaming your parents or the family or the society the world you blame God blame <laughs> you know say, and think that uh, you know as a child I was brought up as a Christian so I used to blame God I think, why did God create this realm with so many imperfections in it because if I were God I would have created everything perfect <laughs> in a kind of child way of thinking <laughs> Why, why did God create pain? You know, you, you know, you fall down and hurt yourself as a little boy, and you, and it hurts. And then why, why did if God created anything? Why did God create pain? And so then my mother would say something that I don't really even remember now <laughs> to justify pain, but. <clears throat> So, like, like even at a very young age, I could, I could conceive, you know, a, a, a realm where everything is beautiful and pleasant and perfect and no pain, and uh, you know, all, you know, ice cream every day. <laughs> <laughs> and so, one can, can, you know, one can create that uh, paradise that. That's not the way life is. So, so in our life, you know, as the summoners, as mendicants, is to is to really reflect on the way it is. And of course, this is you know it's looking at yourself really, because you you know you, it's not just looking outward and 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 uh, seeing the world as something separate, uh, you know, from an object of senses, but it's actually. Focusing on, you know, this, this is the point where you feel, you know, we, we feel how the, the the beauty of a situation affects our consciousness, or how the, the painfulness affects, or the praise that we get, or the blame, or the uh, feelings that we create around ourselves, or loneliness, or fears, or uh, emotional hang-ups or neurotic problems are can be seen and witnessed in terms of Buddha um, the reflective consciousness with this reflective using consciousness and informing it with wisdom like to observe so the Buddha's teachings are about the way things are not about how it should be so it's not about like a communist ideal is you create this, this uh, say, the communist ideal was taking, you know, how things should be. You know, that everything's shared equally and there's no class system and, and uh, no poverty. And this is an ideal uh, that's very, that for a period of time, the last century was very inspiring to people. You know, everywhere, people, Marx, Karl Marx, people like that really inspired idealistic people and intellectuals with the, this the ideal of communism or socialism. <clears throat> so then, you know, like the attempts at, at, at creating communist systems, uh, they never really understood the law of karma. So like in Thailand, you know, you even you ask the little children in Bumwai about the law of karma, they all know, you know, you do good, you receive good, 
you do bad, you receive bad. So, tam di dai di, tam chua dai chua, it's kind of, kind of, you know, probably every Thai child can say that, can't they? <laughs> and so, you know, if you, it's cause and effect. And if you have, to have a good effect, you have to have the, a good cause. So you can't, you know, where in the West, like in America, we, we often thought that, uh, you know, sometimes you have to do, uh, you know, bad things in order uh, the, the end would be what you want, you know. So the end justifies the means. Uh, but in the Buddhist sense, and, and in, in this reflective style that we're using, is we're observing. If you, you know, if what you do, if it's if you do good, then you receive a good result, or if you do bad, then the result of that is bad or painful. And so the the attempts to make, force everybody to become communists became a form of tyranny. You know, so you you have the end something very noble and uh, very ideal, where everything's fair and just and everybody's equal, and then New Year's tyrannical means. So what do you end up with? Uh, as tyranny as a result, <laughs> rather than communism. And, uh, and the, now it's the communism's kind of passe, uh, and it's democracy. You know, so it's kind of, <clears throat> we're going to force the Iraqis to become democratic <laughs> and have kind of two bombing the hell out of them. <laughs> 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 so I mean, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> but in terms of your own practice, observe. You know, this like I put this in very, kind of very simple ways. Like, like uh, you know, if, if I think positive thoughts, then I feel positive about things. If I'm thinking negatively, critically about things, then I feel that I feel depressed or disappointed or critical. And so the you know, it's quite immediate, you know, you get you know, like meta practice, you know, you start thinking positively about may all beings be happy and may I abide in well being and things. And it is all using positive words and concepts and, and just filling your consciousness with positivity is that you, you do feel happy with that, you feel, uh, you know, inspired or happy. And then if you fill your mind with uh, what's wrong, you know, so you get caught up with what's wrong with yourself or wrong with the monastery or wrong with the country and, and wrong with the monks and the lay people and, and then you, how do you feel, you know, if I'm, if I'm, a, if I'm really in a bad mood and and contemplating, uh, you know, the things I don't like, uh, then I feel depressed or angry or indignant. But, uh, and so this is a way of observing, you know, how it actually works in your own, you know, your own experience. You know, how to, you're beginning to understand that <clears throat> how, you know, what you're, your life is about as a human being. You you know how to use your mind, how to cultivate, how to develop in skillful way. Uh, and, and it's not through trying to, uh, you know, use a, a force and fear and intimidation or just my, a willpower and, and kind of that, but it's because we can be tyrannical towards ourselves. <clears throat> you know, sometimes we're very tyrannical. We have a, a, an inner tyrant of kind of force that always is, is uh, telling you you should you should be something you're not, or you're not good enough the way you are, or you know. So there's, you know, you should practice more, or you should be better than what you think you are, or that. And then that tear. And it's not that it. You know, we, we can always imagine ourselves better than the way um, the way one's 
conceive oneself, but um, the, the point of this reflection is to observe that, to be the observer, not the critic. It's not, it's not about criticizing or comparing with ideals, uh, but in just being, trusting yourself to be aware, to be the, the puto, the knower of the condition you're feeling, whatever it might be. So a positive feeling, feeling happy and full of inspiration and faith is like this. And then, then it changes. You can't sustain that. You go, you know, something will happen and, and then you feel fear or anger or whatever. And then anger is like this. And, and so then this way we begin to, then we see, you know, the way it is, all conditions are impermanent. So your relationship to feeling towards emotion is not is no is no longer judging it in worldly terms or personal identity, but but in recognizing it's like this. And so this is called like buto tamo, the awareness, knowing the way it is. All conditions are impermanent, and try to sustain anger. You know, keep it uh, and and hold it. You know, and then uh, you know. Usually, you know, when the conditions for anger arise, and we feel it. But you, but uh, then there's the conditions change, and then we feel uh, various other emo- moods or emotions arise. And so, what we can do is be aware of that changing, that the anicca of. Uh, the impermanence of conditions that you you know but your mood the mood you have or the emotional habits you you have or uh, abuse opinions uh, physical uh, sensory experiences are you know what we have to live with the, this realm that we're experiencing now is is a is a continuous bombardment of irritating impingement from birth to death. <laughs> and whose fault is it? Got it. <laughs> so the demand that it stop is, you know, is an impossible demand because this is, uh, you know, but it is something that we learn from and and this is the whole point of the Buddhist teaching, is to awaken and, and observe, learn from it. Because this is what we can do, the human, this reflective ability we have is a, is, is a, is a, is a blessing, you know. We can, you know, we can learn from this experience. We can't control it and make it what we want, but we can learn, you know, so that then in this way, this mindfulness allows us to uh, to be this this knower of conditioned phenomena, rather than <coughs> being caught in endlessly kind of manipulating conditions and you know running from one thing to another mm-hmm. and and, um, and and just being caught in the, in fear and anxiety and, and ignorance about. Uh, reality about the way things really are. So this word Dhamma also is uh, for me significant because it, it, you know, in English translation it's 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 reality. It's it's real. This is reality. And to awaken to reality is uh, what the Buddha, you know, in in this kind of teaching is is encouraging us to do, to wake up (laughs) to the real. And then, of course, like in, you know, in the, you know, I've been accused of um, of not living in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like in England, for example, some people say, "Well, you're not living in the real world." Uh, you know, what do they mean? What's the real world? It makes you think. What they what they think is the real world isn't real. <laughs> <clears throat> and and then they conceive, you know, like uh, me living in a kind of in a, in a lovely place, abiding in a state of 
bliss all the time, you know, <laughs> above it all, and and uh, I don't have to face the problems of family life and and working professional and, and the problems that you have with your wife and children and parents and thing. That's the real world. You have a you know have a mortgage you're paying off and. <laughs> And they think I've, I've kind of side, you know, bypassed it, you know, cheating on the whole system you know, by becoming a Buddhist monk, and then expecting people to come and feed me. <laughs> what are you doing? You expect us to come and feed you? What good are you doing for the society? <laughs> and, and these are questions, you know, that really, because you know, if you're living in say. In a non-Buddhist country, in Thailand, they never ask those kind of questions. But in in, in non-Buddhist countries, they they see things in in, in a very different way. <coughs> so you know, then then just look at the result. Like at Amravati, the monastery in England, you know, it's, it's like a, a people love to come there because it does. It gives them, uh, you know, some <coughs> geographic lo- geographical location where they can go and get away from <coughs> the mortgage and the family problems <laughs> have another perspective you know and, and this uh, the people really appreciate that you know whether they're Buddhist or not so in, in the, like this morning you know just contemplate how you know, eager the lay community here is to for us to become enlightened. <clears throat> you know, so I read the more I can play all those lay people out there, you know, they really want the best for me. They come here, give me the four requisites, so I don't ha- you know, I have a you know, what I need for the day and uh, so I can practice, you know, develop and, and learn and w- awaken and cultivate this awakening. And so then you start thinking of the lay people, and you know, it's really, you know, the, the, you feel this gratitude and a sense of katanya, that their, their good intentions and their generosity make it possible for us to, to live like this. And then our sole duty really is to. Awaken, you know. So that's our job, really. That's that's what we're, you know. That's what the point of this life is: is, is to recognize, realize this yourself, so that it's no longer just going along with a party line or a, an institution or a tradition, and, and just by, you know, grasping the the form of it, but by developing it for with awareness, with sati. Uh, Panya and and so that then you you know uh, then when we we see this in a in a direct way and know it you know on a profound level no no longer just theoretical or intellectual but from 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 the gut level then we then we we are you know we have a lot to offer the society in terms of of being able to. You know, make make this this tradition, this teaching available to them, because it is a it's a very uh, you know it's a, a very accurate tool. This 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 uh, this what this teaching from the from the suttas. It's not just philosophy or speculation or metaphysics is actually you know it gives you very clear direction there's, there's a precision to it it'll cut through all the all the conditioning that we've acquired from you know from day one to the present moment if you use it for that it'll, it'll because it really takes you to emptiness to pure awareness uh, that isn't uh, you know isn't uh, 
isn't condi- it has not con- been conditioned yet. We know, so you, you know, and I found in my own practice this is being able to recognize this empty conscious reality and to to trust it, and then the, then I have a perspective on my own cultural conditioning or personal attitudes or assumptions you know that I that I have you know, as a as a separate personality individual so you know you're getting to and this we can actually do this is not asking you know the impossible from anyone but it is subtle it's very simple and but it's so simple that complicated people like ourselves make it incredibly difficult. <laughs> so, see the monastic form not as a increased complication, but really, you know, even though the Vinaya can look complicated at first, like it's, you know, just, you know how many rules did you have before you ordained? <laughs> <laughs> and then you go, oh, it's been nice. So it, it sounds very complicated, but it is. It's, you know, it actually what it's doing is simplifying our life because it, it uh, you know, it, it restrains us, restricts us to where, you know, we, we're not being, we have, we, we're not being just pulled out every which way like we would be if we weren't monks, but we have to live within boundaries and in limitations and which force us, you know, to to help us to to stop this this uh, proliferating outgoing tendencies to observe to form this this sense of of observing being the Bhutto. So in this Thai first tradition, you know, the the uh Man and and then Ajahn Chah and, and all that have developed this Bhutto practice, which is uh, like the, a mantra form of Buddha, the name Buddha. And so, you know, you take this Bhutto and you, you know, it's a simple enough word, but it, it also isn't just something, just a, you know, a, just a, a word uh, to cling to, but it, it's a reminder. So you, you know, and then I've used it over the years just to, because I'm a, a tendency is to think all the time. You know, to, to endlessly uh, proliferate with thoughts. And so uh, I've thought, you know, then I realized I'll take this one little word and think that. <laughs> Rather than think all in this proliferating way. <laughs> and when I start, you know, if I don't do this, then I tend to start thinking and this the proliferation takes place. You know, this is like grammar and all that. You know, you have a whole pattern of, you start with this and then it carries you onward. But, but with the mantra, you know, you've got this one little word, two syllables, poo and to, and that's it. And, you, you know, you, you're thinking this word. But then it also means, uh, you know, awaken, like right? in Thai they say Puru or the knower. And so this is, uh, and consciousness is is, a no, is is knowing, you know, pure consciousness is, you know, it's a knowing thing. And then we're forms, we're conscious through this form, through the human form. So we're experiencing consciousness within the limitation of the human form, the body, and the senses. So the point is, and once you're born, then you get conditioned. You know, so you're you're conditioned by what your mother and father and and your family, and culture, education. So you form all your, you know, your ego and and value system. Through, uh, through the conditioning process. So mindfulness will bring you back to the pure before you become anything, pure consciousness, uh, before it's conditioned by 
culture or anything whatsoever. And then you recognize it. That's like the third noble truth, uh, Naroda. You can see this. You recognize it. And then you, then you, then you can, um, recognize the, you know, begin to see the condition, the subtlety of, of assumptions, attitudes, uh, things one just takes for granted because of, you know, you learned right and wrong, good and bad and all this from, you know, your, your mother and father and, and your social position, cultural identities and so forth. And then you, and, and then we operate through, through those perceptions, but you're getting back like, when Portugal called it our real home. And that isn't personal. It's not like, you know, mine. Uh, I can't claim it as a personal uh, attribute. Because it's all of us, you know, we're all... Consciousness is the same thing. It's not a my consciousness and yours. But then the conditions are personal, like I'm Ajahn Sumedho and you're not. <laughs> and to discern the difference, you know, so this is, this is the gift, this is the gift available to us here. And, and, uh, just to encourage you, you know, because we need encouragement. Because we, you know, it's, a, it's subtle and also it's so easily, you know, easily comprehended on, on, the, on the level of words. Uh, but emotionally and, and that we're so conditioned otherwise, you know, the whole momentum of worldly values are so, you're going against the whole system that everybody believes in. Everybody, are, you know, in the society believes in. Uh, uh, the challenge is, is learning to, and in this kind of form, if you, the monastic form is helpful because it, its whole aim really is to, to see this, you know, uh, rather than to just become a Theravada and Buddhist monk of the Thai forest tradition and then be critical of all the other forms of Buddhism. <laughs> 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 which is what some monks do isn't it <laughs> that, they miss the point <laughs> so I'll leave you with this